Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk to you guys about if statements in C++. Now, an if statement is basically a structure that we can use in our code, which will allow our program to respond to different situations. So when one situation occurs, we can do one thing. And when another situation occurs, we can do another thing. Essentially, we're able to check different conditions. And when those conditions are true, we can do certain things. And when those conditions are false, we can do other things. So I'm going to show you guys exactly how this works down here in our main function. I'm just going to create a couple different things. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a variable. It's going to be a Boolean variable. And remember, a Boolean variable stores a true or a false value. So I'm going to create a Boolean called is male. And I'm going to give this a value initially of true. So we're basically creating this variable is male. It's storing whether or not someone is male and I'm giving it a value of true. Now I want to show you guys how we can use an if statement and an if statement, like I said, allows us to respond to different situations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be able to write an if statement that will respond to the situation where the user is a male and the situation where the user is not a male. So what I can do is I can actually say if and I'm going to make an open and closed parentheses and then I'm going to make an open and closed curly bracket. Now inside of this open and closed parentheses, I can specify a condition so I can actually check a condition. And if the condition that I put inside of those open and closed parentheses is true, then we're going to execute the code inside of here. If it's false, then we're going to move on. So over here, we're essentially putting a true or a false value. And that's basically a condition, right? It's a true or a false value. So I'm going to come down here. I'll say if and I'm just going to type out is male and Essentially what this is saying is if the value stored inside of is male is true. In other words, if the value in here is true, then we're going to execute the code that's inside of these curly brackets. So I could say like C out and I'm just going to type out like you are a male. And now when I run my program, you guys will see what happens. So I'm gonna run the program and you'll see over here, it says you are a male and that's because the Boolean is male was true. So the value that was inside of this condition, the value inside of the parentheses, which was true, and we executed this code. If I made this false, now you'll see that this code isn't going to get executed. So we're not going to be printing anything out. So because the value inside of this parentheses, because the condition was false, we're actually not going to execute this code. But let's say that if the person wasn't male, we also wanted to handle that situation. I can use another keyword in C called else. So I can type out else just like that. And we're going to make an open and closed curly bracket. Now, inside of this open and closed curly bracket, I can put a message that's going to be displayed when this is false. So I'm just going to say C out and I'll say you are not male. Right. So I'm responding to this situation. So now, even though is male is false, when I run my program, it's going to be able to respond to that. So it's going to say you are not male. Essentially, what's happening here is my program is now smart enough to respond to this variable. So if this variable is male is true, it can handle that. If it's not true, it can also handle that. And so basically inside of these parentheses, I specified a condition. In our case, it was a true or false value that was stored inside of this is male variable. So that's kind of cool. Now let's up the ante a little bit. I want to show you guys how we can make these more complex. This is a very simple example, but let's say I added in another Boolean. So I had another Boolean called is tall and I'm going to set this equal to true. And actually I'm going to set this equal to true as well. So now in addition to is male, I also have is tall. So let's say that we wanted to check to see if the person was both male and if they were tall. So down here, what I can do is I can use something called the and operator. I could say is male and is tall. And basically what's happening now is C++ is saying if the person is male and the person is tall, then we're going to print this out. So I'll just say you are a tall male. So this code, this line of code down here and any of the code inside of these open and closed curly brackets is only going to get executed when is male is true and is tall is true. 
Essentially, this AND operator is allowing me to check two separate conditions, and both of them have to be true in order for this line to get printed out. So you'll see is male is true and is tall is also true. So now when I run my program, you'll see that it says you are a tall male. Here's the thing though, if I set one of these to false, so if I set is tall to false, this whole condition is no longer gonna be true. So then we're gonna go down here to this else block and this should probably say like you are not male or not tall, but we'll just leave it like that just for demonstration purposes. All right, so now it says you are not male, right? And obviously, like I said, that message should be different. But the point is that this condition was false because one of these values up here was false. And that's how we can use this AND operator. There's another operator called the OR operator, and that is similar to AND, except only one of these conditions has to be true in order for the whole thing to be true. So even though is tall is set to false, and is male is set to true, this is still gonna execute. So it's still gonna say you are a tall male because one of them is true. So let's go ahead and run this program now. You'll see it says you are a tall male. So it executed the code that was inside this initial if block. And that's because one of them was true. If I set both of these to false now, because we're using the or, now it's gonna go down to you are not male. So you'll see down here, it says you are not male. So that's basically how we can use and and how we can use or. With the and operator, we can put two conditions in and both of them have to be true for the whole thing to be true. With the or operator, only one of the conditions has to be true for the whole thing to be true. And they can both be true as well and it'll be true. But if both of them are false, then it's gonna be false. All right, let's make this even more complex though. So I wanna show you guys another thing we can do. I'm gonna bring this back to and. So I'm gonna say is male and is tall. But let's say that we wanted to check to see if they were male and they weren't tall. So if they were like a short male. Well, I can actually check another condition. So I can use another keyword in C++, it's called else if. And I'm gonna make an open and close parentheses and an open and close curly bracket and I'm just gonna bring this down to a new line. So else if is basically saying if this condition up here is false, then we're gonna come down here and we're gonna execute this condition. So if this condition up here is false, instead of just going to else, we're gonna come over here and we're gonna check another separate condition. So over here, I wanna check to see if they're male and they're not tall. So they're not tall. So I can say is male, just like before. So I'm saying else if is male and is tall. But remember, I wanna to check to see if they're not tall. And here I wanna introduce you guys to another operator. It's called the negation operator. It's basically an exclamation point. And whenever you put this exclamation point before a condition like is tall, it's gonna actually negate that entire condition. So if is tall is true and we put this negation operator over here, it's gonna set it equal to false and vice versa. So essentially what I'm saying here is else if is male and is not tall. That's basically what this is saying. So now over here, we could just print out, you are a short male, right? Because if this code, in other words, if this condition is true, that means they're male and they're not tall, so they're short male. And there's one more that we can check. So I'm gonna say another else if over here. And there's one more possible scenario with these two variables up here. That's when they're tall, but they're not male. So I could say not is male and is tall. So this would be like, you know, it could be like a tall female or something, right? So down here, I'm gonna go ahead and say C out and I'll just say you are tall, but not male, right? So essentially I'm just printing that out onto the screen. So now we have all of these different situations covered. So. Over here in this if else block, which is what we would call this, and actually down here in this else block, we would wanna change this. So this is gonna be you are not male and not tall. So that's just you know semantically gonna be correct. All right, so we're able to respond to every possible combination of these two variables up here. So let's try this out. I'm gonna set both of these equal to true. And now I'm gonna run my program. So they're both equal to true. So our program will be able to respond to that situation. 
You'll see it says, you are a tall male. Awesome, it was able to respond to that. Let's set is male equal to false. So now we have is male false and is tall true. Our program, once again, is gonna be able to handle that. So it's gonna say, you are tall, but not male. So the program's smart enough now to be able to tell us what we are depending on the value of these variables. Let's try another one. So we'll set is male to true and is tall to false. And again, it's gonna be able to respond. So it'll say, you are a short male. And then finally, we'll set them both false and we should get the answer, which is gonna be, you are not male and not tall. Awesome. So we were able to figure this out just by using all this stuff. So let me walk you guys through this one more time. We have this if statement and it's checking if they're a male and if they're tall. Now these are both conditions, right? So I'm checking this is male, this is a condition. Essentially it's a true or false value, right? And then I'm checking is tall. And if both of these are true, then we'll execute the code inside of here. If this is false, then we'll come down here and we'll check this other condition. And we're gonna keep doing that until we get down here and we figure out, okay, they're not male and they're not tall. So that's the basics of if statements. And really this is just scratching the surface of if statements. I talked to you guys about a lot of the different things we can do, but there's one more thing I wanna to talk to you guys about in the next tutorial, which are called comparisons. And down here, we're using these Boolean variables in order to get our conditions, right? So I'm using these, and these are either gonna be true or false, right? but we can also use something called comparisons. And with comparisons, we can check to see if different values relate to each other in different ways. So I could check to see if like a number is greater than another number or something. And we can use those comparisons as our conditions. And that's gonna be pretty cool. So stick around for the next tutorial and I'll talk to you guys more about these if statements. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.